So as many of you know, protests have been taking place in Kenosha, Wisconsin and around the country because we need them. I mean, George Floyd was murdered and there's been months of protests and we still are seeing videos of police officers assaulting and attempting to murder unarmed black Americans. As many of you know, Jacob Blake was shot in the back by a police officer in Kenosha seven times. Thankfully, he survived, but he's going to be paralyzed from the waist down, possibly for the rest of his life. It'll be a miracle if he walks again. So, I mean, that shows you why we need these protests. I don't know how you can watch that video and um, not be outraged. Like, this should speak to everyone's core human instinct, right? How can you not see why this anger exists? So the protests have been taking place, and of course, as we've seen across the country, vigilantes are getting involved. People with guns who are going there to defend the police, or according to them, defend businesses. And um, it got a little out of hand, to say the least, because a 17-year-old named Kyle Rittenhouse drove from Illinois to Wisconsin to protect property with an illegal gun, something that he obtained illegally, he's 17, and he ended up performing an act of terrorism. He murdered two people and injured a third. Now, there were reports on the Kenosha Guard Facebook page that this group was inciting violence against these protesters, but Facebook did nothing. Facebook did not alert the authorities, and as a result, a 17-year-old vigilante right-wing terrorist went there and murdered people. Now, that alone is outrageous, right? But the story gets worse when we learn the extent to which the Kenosha Police Department was actually coordinating with these vigilantes. So as the Daily Beast reports, Kyle Rittenhouse, a rifle-toting teenage Blue Lives Matter fan suspected of fatally shooting at least two people and injuring another during protests in Kenosha over the shooting of Jacob Blake, has been charged with murder. Rittenhouse, 17, was arrested in Illinois and faces charges of first-degree intentional homicide, according to Lake County, Illinois clerk of court's public records. So far, he is labeled a fugitive from justice in the complaint, which states that the teenager fled the state of Wisconsin with intent to avoid prosecution for that offense. He's been assigned a public defender and was scheduled to appear at an extradition hearing on August 28th, according to court records. Kenosha Police Chief Daniel Miskinis said that the two victims were a 26-year-old Silver Lake resident and a 36-year-old from Kenosha. The injured person was a 26-year-old from West Allis. A gunman shot one person in the head and another in the chest around 11.45 p.m. Tuesday amid another night of violent unrest in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Videos circulating on social media showed an armed man tripping over, then firing at people who seemed to be making an attempt to disarm him. In one video, a young man fires several shots at protesters before getting up and walking toward police vehicles. With his rifle still on display, the suspected gunman appears to have his hands over his head as he approaches police in an apparent surrender. In another video, a man with similar clothing can be seen running and holding his rifle. He He's heard apparently uttering into his phone, I just killed somebody, as he continues to run. He had his hands up, and they told him to get out of there, even though everyone was yelling that he was the shooter. Brent Ford, a 24-year-old photographer who witnessed the shooting, told Vice News, the police didn't seem to hear or care what the crowd was saying. Now, before this right-wing terrorist murdered two people, he was interviewed by the Daily Caller, and he said that he was there to protect businesses. So he was prepared to do violence. That's what that means. Because if you bring a gun with you to protect businesses, then you are prepared to take a life if you feel as if that business is threatened. And he did exactly what he intended to do. You don't go there with a gun unless you are intending or prepared to do violence. And he did it just that. Murdered people. Now, there is a video uh, of what may be an officer asking uh, the vigilantes to stop pointing guns at protesters. We don't know if this is an officer who's telling them that. But there's another video of this terrorist walking side by side with a police officer. They're giving him water and telling the vigilantes how much they appreciate what they're doing. That's what started most of this. Now we're all the way back by the gas station again. Hey, thank you, guys. Need water? Seriously. 
Guys to our right, we need water. We need water. We'll throw you one. Hey, Joe! Hey, Alright, come on, guys, let's get out of here. Damn. Which way should we go? Okay, we'll get double, double. Thank you. I'm sure they have a lot of bottles of water. <laughs> That's all we can do. <laughs> nice, nice truck, guys. You're going to have to get out of there. You're just the last warning. You're going to have to move south or you're going to have to get off this block. This is the last warning. You will disperse. So these people who are not police officers, they don't have the training to deal with protests on this scale or riots. The police are like, oh, sure, we, we appreciate the fact that you're helping us. Even if you're like 17 years old and you're a kid, thank you so much. Definitely not going to be a disaster uh, because you don't know what you're doing. You're in over your head. But, you know, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Here's some water. Need anything else from us? Insane. Now, after he murdered two people, he was walking towards police and it seemed as if he wanted to surrender, but he ended up not surrendering and they caught him in Illinois. But he had some sort of hand signal that he issued to the cops um, we don't know what this was about necessarily, but take a look. Now, the video to me is disturbing, not necessarily because of the hand signal, because I'm I'm not going to try to decipher what that meant. He was clearly signaling something to the cops. But what's astonishing to me about that video is that he just murdered two people, almost killed a third person, injured someone, and he's just walking casually with a gun on his chest. Imagine if one of the protesters armed themselves to protect protesters and not buildings. Do you think that they'd be able to just walk away flippantly like that? especially after they just murdered people. I mean, the story is insane, but it gets worse because apparently police officers in Kenosha drove protesters out of a park that they were in and pushed them towards the vigilantes. Now, there are multiple reports that this is what happened, and one of the vigilantes actually confirms that police told them they would be pushing them towards the vigilantes so they can deal with them. Today, they were like, "We're gonna push them down by you because you can deal with them, and then we're gonna leave." See, and then as soon as they said, the that second thing, the shots fired, I had to tell like six people it wasn't fucking you guys. Yeah. So yeah. like we fucking, as soon as they said that bullshit to us, people hurt. Oh. So let's just take a moment and try to digest what this presumed vigilante just told us. The cops told him that they would be driving the protesters out of one area and into the arms of vigilantes. So the vigilantes could be the ones to deal with the protesters. And after the police officers pushed protesters into that area, one uh, of the vigilantes ended up murdering two people. Do you understand why there are calls to defund and abolish the police? Because... The police is supposed to be protecting people from vigilantes, gunmen. But they pushed them towards these violent thugs who were there and people got murdered. Now, the police chief put out a statement and what he says here is infuriating. Like, I was trembling with anger after I heard him speak. Persons were shot. Everybody involved was out after the curfew. I'm, I'm not going to make a great deal of that, but the point is... The curfew's in place to protect. Had persons not been out involved in, in violation of that, perhaps the situation that, that unfolded would not have happened. Um, so the last night, a 17-year-old individual from Antioch, Illinois, was involved in the use of firearms to reserve, to, excuse me, to, uh, to resolve whatever conflict was in place. The result of it was two people are dead. 
So first of all, let's just point out the fact that he didn't describe what happened as a murder or even a killing. He just said that people were involved in a shooting. And the most outrageous part to me was the fact that he says, well, these people, you know, if they weren't violating this curfew in the first place, they'd probably still be alive. But, you know, the 17 year old terrorist, he wasn't violating the curfew. According to the police chief of Kenosha, he was there to resolve whatever conflict was in place. So understand what he's saying here. He's tacitly admitting that the curfew that they imposed didn't apply to the armed vigilantes. It only applied to the protesters. Now, this curfew is unconstitutional in the first place. You don't get to just unilaterally criminalize protests that you don't like. You don't get to override the First Amendment by declaring these curfews. But if you are going to issue these curfews, which I think are unconstitutional, then why do they not apply to the vigilantes? Why wasn't the 17-year-old terrorist subject to to the same curfew. Why was your fucking police officers working with a 17 year old with a fucking gun? What is wrong with you? Do you understand why people of color don't trust the police? You're working with a 17 year old who went there with a fucking gun. You are coordinating with vigilantes. What do you think is gonna happen? Of course people are gonna get killed. Of course. So the blood is on your hands. The blood is on the hands of the police officers who allow these people to do what they believe is a vigilante justice. The cops are okay with that. They're not the bad guys. The vigilantes with guns, they're not the problems. It's the protesters. Maybe if you cared half as much about property damage as you did about human life, you'd see it from a logical perspective. I mean, Jesus Christ. You're working with fucking terrorists with guns because they're there to protect businesses. Protecting businesses by uh, shooting anyone who dares to throw a brick through a window because that certainly warrants their death. These vigilantes get to be the uh, judge, the jury, and the executioner in this case. If they see someone doing property damage, spray painting a building, looting, they get to unilaterally decide whether or not that individual lives or dies. That's justice in America. That's justice according to the Kenosha Police Department. Unfucking real This entire police department needs to be disbanded immediately. Fire everyone. Get the police to, uh, chief to step down. How can you allow this to happen? Your police officers are working with vigilantes as young as 17, maybe younger. And then uh, you're shocked when they're murdered. Actually, he doesn't really seem that shocked. So um, I won't say that. But uh, <laughs> this story is absolutely insane. And this is why people are in the streets protesting. Why they haven't left the streets since George Floyd was murdered. Because this continues to happen. And it will continue to happen unless action is taken. Unless we defund the police. So I don't understand... Um, how you can even make a defense of Kyle Rittenhouse. Some people online are trying to make that defense for him. You know, he didn't mean to do it. He's so young. If you show up to a protest with a gun and you claim you're there to protect businesses, you are prepared to murder someone if they do something that you deem objectionable and worthy of death. These right-wing vigilantes, they get to decide whether or not you live or die. This story is infuriating. This is why these Black Lives Matter protests are so important. And if you can't see it by now, then um, you need to do some soul-searching. Because something is wrong with you. Your sense of outrage is uh, broken. This is disturbing to say the least.